Nessa girl, where you been? I was trying to call on you. My heart got broke, you know it hurt so bad. It's sad to say love wins again. Stay right there. about if they're going to resolve what's going on, if they're going to dissolve the comeback group, if these two are going to be by, brought out. And Martel and Melody dig their heels in and let it know, let it be known that they will not be brought out. They want to dissolve the comeback group and everybody do their respective thing. Now, here's the thing that I'm not understanding because I don't have a full understanding of, of the arrangement. Let's just say they dissolve the comeback group then who legally owns the land and the houses? And I am assuming it's Mel and Martel. Hence why they are leaning towards that option. Um, and I imagine the other ones want to just buy them out because majority of the work seems to already be done and then they can just swoop in and whatever the case may be. Though the buyout does feel fair because I imagine at the very end of the day, you would still relatively get close to what you would make if it was your third of the project. Um, but I guess the Holtz position is, from the looks of things, we've put up the most sweat equity and probably financial equity. So, Kind of fuck it, we can get this project done, but I'll try. Is you gonna stop that and let me do what I gotta do? I guess their position is no, 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 that we can do this without y'all, and I guess that's why they figured no, uh, there will be no buyout, we'll just dissolve the group or whatever the case may be. I, let, me, let me do this, baby. Um, at any rate, shortly after they had the business meeting, things begin to go left. Tisha and Mel get to going at it. Marceau and Martel, they're exchanging not-so-pleasant pleasantries. And the conversation just ends with everybody leaving kind of at an impasse or whatever the case may be. You know, Tisha raised a very valid point. 
as the group left and got ready to get in their car, she kind of kept Marceau behind him. It's like, listen, you know, why aren't you saying anything? This man is sitting here saying these things and you're just being quiet. And I'm going to tell you one thing I love about that. Tisha, I gained some insight for you. I started to almost say gained a little respect because you proved to me that you're not a fool. I'm not going to call it respect. I'm going to call it insight. Um, you ain't no fool. You ain't no fool. What you are doing in this moment is choosing. Tisha is voluntarily choosing to be naive because nothing has fell directly in her plate or in her face. And I can somewhat respect that. There's nothing for Tisha to react to at this moment, okay? They said it, it's an allegation. There may be a tinge of truth to it. Hence, her mama said the same damn thing. But as of now, it, I'm not gonna go looking for it and it hasn't fallen in my plate. But bitch, I want you to know my wheels are turning and I'm not stupid, okay? So at least we got that. Now, Marceau made me mad because he was, she was like, why aren't you saying anything? And he was like, baby, there's nothing for me to say. No, Marceau, the reason your ass ain't saying nothing is because you've already realized Martel is not playing fair and you don't wanna egg him on because at this point, Martel is so volatile Ain't no telling what he knows and what's liable to come up out of his mouth. So it's best that you just leave Martel the hell alone. And that was your position. And I respect that you're trying to keep your household together and you're trying to get on your P's and Q's. I definitely ain't mad at you. Now, you know, uh, the mama, the mama, or not the mama, Martel decides to meet with his uncle. And, you know, he said that while all of his friends and buddies around him had 10 girlfriends and having sex with all these people, he just decided to have one. With a straight face. And y'all, that goes back to what I said. And for me, one or 10 is the same damn thing. But foundationally, God damn it, something's in my eye. Foundationally, Martel and a lot of men, black men in particular, carry this mentality that it is okay to have a wife and a little lady on the side. You see what I'm saying? And that's what that was. This is a true testament to what I said about those men in the barbershop having those conversations. And the funny thing about it is, you know, the uncle is talking to him about Mel being fed up, but I'm curious to know about all these yeah, other friends yeah, that we've seen on yeah. this show that have been around him that obviously knew that he was doing this. Hell, Tisha knew that the girl had a damn BMW. It seemed like the whole town damn knew. What were they saying prior to this shit hitting the fan? Or were they just turning the blind eye and not correcting this behavior? Or could they could not correct it because they asked was doing the same damn thing? It's just a lot to unpack there. Um, but... He was feeling like it was okay. And the uncle said, well, you know what? Y'all have been together for three years, so there must have really been something there. You know, and Martel gave us some insight into the relationship. Yes, he was her man. He was her girlfriend, her, her boyfriend, for three years. Um, here's the sad part about it for me. It feels to me from a heartstring perspective that he is more emotionally attached to the side chick and that his obligation to Mel seems to be one of vanity and legality. You know what I'm saying? It, it feels to me that it's like, shit, I got these kids over here, this my wife, we got these businesses, so let me appease this over here, but here's where my heart is. And I know from that, Isaac, stop running, don't go that way. You know, knock over the light. And that has got to be a sad reality for Mel to face. Like, don't get me wrong, your dude dip off, your girl dip off, have sex with somebody and they cut it over it's done. You know, you can kind of move past that, but it being a recurring theme in a relationship and it's the same person, I'm sorry, my self-esteem would be all tore up. My self-worth would be all in question. Look, boy, no, 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 give me that. So, at any rate, Martel asked the uncle a very, you know, weird question to me, which was, do you think I'm cocky? Or arrogant. 
No, 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 no. Well, yeah, we think this fool is. And the uncle said, yeah, and you got that way when you got the A&M star playing ball, this, that, and the third. I do like the fact that Martel did seem to be very open with the uncle, and that was the one safe space where he felt like he could be semi-vulnerable and just be real, even with the cameras rolling. And I love the fact that that uncle, I think his name was Uncle Mel, was very forthright, honest, and not condemning. You know what I'm saying? He let her know that he didn't agree with things, but still was supportive. And more people need family members like that. That old lady or old man sitting under the tree in this instance, that just tell you like it is. Now, Tisha talking to her mama. Let me tell y'all something. And I know it's part of the reality TV formula. Every show got to have that Mama Joyce, Mama D character. And on this show, it's Tisha's mama. Tisha said one, Tisha's mama said one thing. There was a old lady sitting under the tree. She said, you got to fuck your husband four days out of the week. Yeah. She called me over and she said to me, she said, baby, you may not have to give it to him seven. You got to give it to him four. But, Ma, let me tell you something. They making Viagra and they making pills at the gas station for these niggas. Even four days ain't enough, baby. Sometimes you got to give it to him four times a day, okay? Coochie be soft. I mean, Coochie be so and tough as damn <laughs> leg quarter messing around with the way these men like to hunch. You know they doing all these new drugs. They smoking that reefer, ma. And now they say they got their good weed down there in Huntsville. So they doing that drinking the Michelob's. It make them want to fuck you four and five times a day or whatever the case may be. So Tisha, I ain't mad with you, baby. Don't let your man beat up your stuff. You might have to move him, man. You might need some matters left on it for somebody else for your new man. Uh, nevertheless, Tisha Mama ain't no damn fool. She said it might not be 20, but it may be one. Catch them T's. And Tisha, I'm glad she received it. You know what I'm saying? Tisha ain't no fool. But like I said earlier, Tisha said, you know what? It ain't fell in my plate yet. I'm just going to let it ride. Let it, let it, let it ride. Mel speaks at the Boys and Girls Club. I'm going to tell you something. Mel speaking at the Boys and Girls Club really... It really, really did something to and for me. I was really impressed. Um, not because she's well-spoken and she's educated and she's well put together because we know all those things. I mean, she's an AKA. You know what I'm saying? Um, Shouts out to the first fam. Nevertheless, um, move from over there. Move from over there. Nevertheless, um, stop that. He was shaking the table. I knocked my plans over. You knock all that damn dirt over. Your ass gonna be vacuuming it. You hear me? My heart got broke. Don't look at me like that. No, 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 no. Um, Mel at the Boys and Girls Club. It took me outside of her relationship stuff and saw her at least for a piece of the woman that she is. And believe it or not, I do like that woman. I think Mel is a very good person at her core. I think Mel is a very smart woman, and I think Mel has a lot of traits that a lot of women should aspire to have in terms of community involvement and working. And watching that scene, though, I realized the thing that bothers me with Mel is that she is a bad bitch on the surface, but a dumb bitch at her core. You know what I'm saying? And I hate it. Because ideally, Mel is the type of woman that I would gravitate to in real life for her, for her ambition. But I lose all respect when you super duper bad, but it doesn't translate in every aspect of your life. That makes sense? Like, I would think that a woman that, that was that decisive, that cutthroat in business, that to the point, that just on it, would possess that level of being on it in every aspect of her life. And I guess God not going to give you everything. And I guess it's a perfect yin to every yang. She's so on it here that she's so deficient here. And I guess that's where life brings her into balance. I don't know. But that Boys and Girl Club scene was really cute. And I just wish, and I think it's another thing that bothers me, I wish Melody Holt as a whole stood up to what Melody Hole represents in public. And I think that's the core root of why Mel turns me off slightly. Um, they get to the mom's house. Um, Marceau and, and, and Maurice and the mom starts crying and they got the new group over there. Carlos King, I'm gonna tell you something. You're gonna have to hire a new friend to be the transition friend, the friend that transitioned us 
from one scene to the next. Because the light-skinned guy with the hair, he's just not that good at the acting. And it's so abrupt. And it's not fooling no damn body. And to be honest with you, in real life, what happened on that mom's sofa would have never happened. You would never have a man, especially a manly man, as manly as that man is. He's not even a part of the comeback group. He has no dog in this fight, don't have two pennies invested in this endeavor. You would never have a man step between two men and try to get all up in their business, especially it involves business and finances and things of that sort. He ain't got nothing to do with it. And it was just like, you know, yeah, you know what, well, I'm gonna call, I'm, I'm gonna see what I can do. I'm gonna call Martel and see if I can get y'all together. If anything, it would have been more natural for one of the wives to do it or for Maurice to continue to try to do it. It just, Felt awkward, forced, and out of place. I'm not gonna harp on it. I get it. We introducing a new couple to the fold. We gotta bring them in somehow. Don't get lazy on us, okay? Brent, Carlos, find a more creative way. Or better yet, y'all got my number. Pick up the damn phone. Call me and say, Q, daughter, what do you think is a nice, organic way for us to get these folks in the fold. Contrary to popular belief, y'all don't know it all, okay? Because if you did, I wouldn't be sitting here deciphering and unraveling what the fuck going on down to the mama house. And I won't even charge for the first consultation. Nevertheless, that was a very cute scene. I loved Marceau and Maurice's mom. She looked like a, a wholesome mother, the whole cooking and, and situation. And it really, you know, just made me think about, you know, don't fall, baby. Um, this is what family should look like, good family, good friends, and maybe want to pay a visit to Huntsville. Then we get down to the last scene with Mel and Tish at the table. I don't understand how that conversation went so left. You know, it was, hey girl, how you doing? Yes. Then it turned into, you know, what well, I just feel away because you didn't call me when my mom and I mean, my aunt and my grandma passed away. Well, girl, you didn't call me when I was going through this. And then it went to, well, you know, your husband cheating and what I would tell you, but you won't believe nothing I got to say anyway. It's like, whoa. And the thing that I have with the nice, nasty, fake Southern Belle thing is that you get to the table and you play nice because that's what you train that you're supposed to do. But you're really fuming on the inside for one reason or another. And the question really is, why are you mad? You know what I'm saying? Um... I side slightly with Tish when she said, you know, Mel, I don't even know who you are in this moment. And it really did, in my opinion, feel like Mel just snapped out of character really quickly. But I think it has a lot to do with the fact that she's under a lot of scrutiny. Mel is feeling attacked. And she's feeling attacked by this group. Maybe after watching the show, it is hard. And not excusing it, uh-oh. Not excusing, uh-oh. You okay? Uh -oh. Not necessarily excusing her behavior, but just explaining. You know, when, when people going through and their emotions are all over the place, emotions are not rational. And I don't think Mel know what to do with all that internal frustrated ass energy other than to act out of character. I know this much, she put up a good front going back and forth with Tisha, but when Tisha told her ass, you need to check your man with that matching BMW, and walked off, Mel, you were sitting at that table looking real stupid. Like, it was like, yeah, I fought a good battle, but bitch, she hit you with that last gut, gut punch. My report said it was a Benz, but Tisha confirmed that it was a damn BMW. Nevertheless, it's good to know that the Huntsville correspondents on the ground ain't getting it wrong, ain't getting it all right. Love and marriage, Huntsville. Y'all got it going on. Hopefully this episode we can get some more into what's going on and get down to the bottom of it. Hopefully I can be on time, y'all. Life, give me a break. Drop that in the comments, let me know what y'all think, and I'm going to call you about the Real Housewives of Potomac. Bye!